2023 is almost over. And it was a fantastic year with some of the best games ever. Except one that sucked. Ooh. Yeah, modern gaming is filled with games that are barely functional, with the promise of working someday, maybe. But don't forget to pay your $60 for the pre-order and you get this silly hat. Well, I didn't play every game this year, so it wouldn't be a complete list. These are just the games that I found the most enjoyable this year. And as the title suggests, I also decided to include the worst games of this year. But that? let's not make it like in an hour-long video, so maybe five best, five worst, okay? The only reason this game is not higher on the list is just because it was released so long ago that I almost forgot about it. It was developed and released by Dedalic Entertainment, and it should have been the first game in the whole series of games based on the Lord of the Rings franchise. But you know, something went wrong. You play as Smeagol, and it's sort of a stealth platformer. Only you suck at stealth, or jumping, or anything actually. And really, what's the point of this game? Like for real, is there anyone out there who was like, damn, I really wish I could play as Gollum in Mortar, where my main goal are to survive throughout the day without getting bitten to dust. And graphics? Yeah. So no story, no gameplay, and no graphics. But at least we got an apology from development. Sorry. You play as Pepino Spaghetti, who needs to get up the tower before the evil pizza will blow his shop with a laser on top. Sounds about right. Graphics are simple yet so appealing. Pepino is incredibly expressive, switching from being nervous one second to absolute maniac in the next. Gameplay-wise, it mostly resembles Wario, as Pepino's greatest weapon is speed and his elbow. And he's actually so fast that he's practically putting my boy Sonic to the shame. Especially since Pepino can actually run on walls to save momentum. And you need all this speed to get back to the beginning of the level once you finish the main goal, or you would have to redo the whole level. Quite unusual for 2023 game. But the feeling you get once you beat the level? Oof. And in this regard, this game feels like it was created by a speedrunner and you constantly want to redo your runs to improve it and do it flawlessly. More like Buckfall, am I right? <laughs> this is the game with one of the fastest online drop in the last years. It should have been a spiritual continuation of the Left 4 Dead games, but the only thing they achieved similar to Left 4 Dead is a number of playable characters. The game is filled with bugs. And it's so dead that even Microsoft is like, stop it. Stop! He's already dead. It was developed by Arcane Studio, which is famous for Dishonored series or Dark Messiah, if you're old enough. Don't worry, you'll learn to enjoy the pain. But I guess it didn't work out this time, so whoops. War levels. Everybody hates them. So. Obviously, Mint Rocket decided to develop a game that is one huge water level. Sounds like fun. But really, this game is amazing. You play as Dave, the diver. You follow him, and your main goal is exploration of the seafloor, catching fish, and fighting sharks. But you would also need to operate your sushi restaurant, farm in the fields, take underwater pictures, fight in monsters, save princess. To put it shortly, there is little of everything in this game. But not once it was actually overwhelming, the game slowly provides you with every new mechanic one by one. So there's constantly something to do, and it's one of those games where you'll be like, one last thing before I go to sleep, and poof, it's 6am. But you know what? It's totally worth it. To be honest, this is the most stable Bethesda game. The main problem with Starfield is not story, graphics or gameplay, all of it is fine. The main drawback is lack of exploration. Yeah, in a game about exploration, there's very little of exploration. There is no space travel, cause you fast travel everywhere. There is no planet exploration, cause every planet is AI generated. There is no space station exploration, cause once you've seen one of them, you've seen all of them. Let's be honest, you didn't like Skyrim for its story, RPG or battle system. You liked Skyrim for a million little stories handcrafted for you. You could just randomly wander into a forest and still find something interesting. Todd spent so much time making Starfield as accurate as it could be and apparently forgot to make it interesting. Monkey. 
I really love platformers, so every new Mario game is a great news for me. And waters are amazing. Almost every Mario game tries something new, and this time Nintendo gives so much new stuff. Like Elephant Mario, Rolling Hippos, Moving Pipes, Silhouette Levels, and a million of other small changes to the game. But I mean, at the same time, it's the same Mario game. No 5-minute tutorials or info screens, you can just pick it up and play it right away. So I guess every righteous Sony boy hates its guts. Story revolves around Mario and gang visiting the Flower Kingdom. And Prince Florian. Yeah, this little snub. But of course, Bowser is not going to let Mario just relax. Otherwise, there wouldn't be a game to play, so... Thanks, Bowser? That's no good. I mean... It's a zombie game that looks more like a zombie itself. I know that Walking Dead never had a good game, but this... This is like a new low. First of all, it looks like a game from like a decade ago. It plays horribly, it looks horribly, and most importantly, the story is just... Well, the same, only worse. And if you were a lucky owner of PS5 version, you also couldn't finish the game at all. I have no idea why would you want to. Same publisher, Game Miller Entertainment, also released The Rise of a Kong, which is another cash grab. Just like back in 2000s, where every shitty movie would have a video game released along with it. Only this time we didn't have a movie. Both of these games were obviously rushed to production. And are absolutely not worth not only your money, they are not worth even a minute of your time. I guess it would be two for one? Good job, Gamil. Come quietly or there will be trouble. My favorite movie from the 80s is getting brand new game. And this is the best Robocop simulator ever made. And yeah, it does not try to be anything else. No cover mechanics, no running, no air combat. You're basically a tank. It does not mean that Robocop is invincible. Taking too much shots will still end the game. It's more like your best defense is offense. So just shoot them first before they shoot you. This game is a crown jewel. Its graphics are... Not most advanced, but still really good. You can even enable a facade if it looks too good for your taste. Story is short and on point. It is exactly as after watching a movie, when you are content with what you got, yet deep inside you would still wish for a little bit more. The voice acting is amazing. They didn't manage to get all the actors from the original movie, obviously, but at least they were able to get Peter Weller to return to his role of Robocop. Reinforcements have arrived. But the best one has to be Max Becker. Now, you leave. Bitches, come! Holy Jesus! What is that? What the fuck is that? That's bad. Like, really bad. First, most of the features from the trailer are actually missing in the game. I mean, you're just randomly popping in and out of a car. Physics are ridiculous. And the worst part is that this game was released and finished in buggy as hell. Nothing new here with the idea of making some money and finish it later, allegedly. But it looks like Fantastic bite much more than they could chew. Which should have been obvious, it's not easy to make an open world game with a million of small details just like that. It takes years and years of competent developers and designers to make it. And yeah, I know that this game has also took years to develop. But all throughout its development, Fantastic constantly were reporting that they are lacking the budget. So I guess it shouldn't be such a surprise. Anyway, the game was alive for like two days, then it was removed from Steam and studio was closed. And this, this is exactly why you should never pre-order. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. Man, this is some bullshit! Boo this man! No! No! I did not expect anything good for the CDPR anymore. Once you go down the grid path, like Blizzard, Usually, it's the end for the game development company. But they keep working on this game, polishing it more and more and more, until finally, they release Cyberpunk 2.0. And it's such a great improvement. It is drastically changed, almost like a completely different game. Or again, previously, it really was a beta test. I've already spent 100 hours in new Cyberpunk, completing every side quest, gig or mission, and I still wish for more. With the patch 2.0, CDPR also released Phantom Liberty, and it's okay. It starts absolutely fantastic, with all the action, saving the president, fighting the giant robot, and getting a new hope of saving your own hive. 
but it slows down so much once you're stuck in a spy story, so I don't know. But still, 2.0 is still one of the best surprises for me this year. I mean, with Baldur's Gate or Zelda, you knew that those would be a great game. But Cyberpunk? I did not expect it to go this hard. Okay, now you can go down to the comment section and tell me how stupid I am. And see you next time.